If we want to measure the distance to stars, it's important to understand the different units. I went over this in a different video, but I think it's good to show it here. So uh, when we're measuring distances, I mean, you could use meters, it's true, but it's just it's just 10 to the lots. It doesn't mean so much to us. So we've got a few different units. My favorite is actually the light year because it's literally, it's the distance that light travels in one year. And so you think about this, uh, light goes 300,000 kilometers in one second. So imagine then how fast, how far it goes in one year. Well, that's what one LY is, so one light year. And you can find this in your data book, that's the good news. And it's this, it's 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. Now, where do you find this in your data book? It's actually on the front, so it's actually on page four, for example. So it's in this uh, interesting place with lots of uh, useful knowledge, so including these values here. Next, we have a parsec, and it's written as PC for short, and that's the distance, and we're going we're gonna to go over this in more detail here. It's the distance to have a parallax angle of one arc second. So that's why we literally call it a par for para, parallax, and second for one arc second. So it's like a parsec. And so one parsec, that equals 3.26 light years. Well, finally, we have an astronomical unit. And just so you know, this is actually 1.50 times 10 to the 11 meters. And what this is, this is the distance from the Earth to the Sun, but you have to assume like a circular orbit. I know it's not circular, but you know, if you assume that, then this right here, this distance then from here to here then will be one AU, so one astronomical unit. Now a method to tell the distance to stars is called the parallax method. And it's really cool. It's actually your eyes, uh, if, as long as both your eyes work, you know, if you actually held out your thumb, for example, I mean, I'm going to try it right now, but like if I held out my thumb like this right here, try to open one, like, you know, look at your thumb and have one eye open like this here, and then switch which eye is open. And you'll see your thumb appears to kind of jump. It appears to move. And it turns out your brain is really good at telling, hey, the more movement there is, the closer that thing is. If you're further away, there's less movement from like one eye to the next, because if you think about it, they're, they're each sort of seeing the object slightly differently. Your brain takes care of this for you. But it turns out in order to tell the distance to a star, one method you can use, it's sort of a very, it's a very accurate method. It's just very difficult to do. Is you basically, you do this, you basically have to look at the star, you know, with one eye open, one eye closed, and then, you know, do like this and switch which eye is open. And you'll see when it shifts, then you can tell the distance. The problem is stars are so far away that you don't really notice much shift. And so our goal then is to make, well, imagine we have our eyes. Let's make them as far apart as we can. So you could do it like at one end of the earth, the other end of the earth. The problem is even the closest star to us, like Proxima Centauri, you still won't see any difference. Like, oh, man. So then the way that we figured out to do it is, hey, what's the furthest we could put our eye? Well, if you take a picture of a star, let's say there's a green one right here. Let's say you take a picture of a star uh, in our orbit. And what if then six months later you take another picture of it? compared to the background stars. So let's assume these black ones here are sort of further back. They're in the background, and this is one that's actually relatively close to us. But what's going to happen is this. Let's assume, like, I'll just draw it in blue, let's say, from here. So from here to, let's say, here. Let me just try to go something like this right here, like that. So I'll do the blue one. So that means, hey, if I'm looking, this is a, at least what I see when I look up in the night sky, I'm going to see that star in between the left one and the middle one, so to speak. So in other words, maybe I'll see the star, or maybe I'll draw it in blue, because it's like the blue one right here. So maybe I'll see it like uh, over here, let's just say. But uh, what if, for example, over here, six months later, I take a picture of that star, so maybe I go like this right here. And if you look at this now, from over here on this side, I'm going to be seeing this star. Oh, it's closer to the one on the right. So in other words, maybe I'll notice it. Maybe I'll see it over here. So do you notice then the background stars stayed the same, but this star seemed to sort of jump from one end to the other. This is this parallax idea. Now, through some geometry, we can actually say, well, if you look this here as a parallel line right here, because technically what we could measure is this angle right here. But it turns out since this line here, this D, this is the distance to the star, um, is parallel to this, turns out this angle here will be equal to that angle. And we actually define this angle right here as P. So that's our parallax angle. And this here is the distance, and this here is uh, one astronomical unit. Now it turns out these angles are so small. 
Like if you measure it in degrees, there's no way. I mean, if you think about it, you take a whole circle and you split it up into 360 even pieces, that's called a degree. Well, if you take each degree, those little slices, and split that degree up into 60 even slices, those are called arc minutes. So if you take one one sixtieth of a degree, then that's called an arc minute. Well, if you take one of those sixtieths and you split that up into sixtieths, so that will be a one arc second. And it turns out those are the kind of sizes we're seeing uh, for uh, parallax. So it's going to be like a decimal. It's going to be like 0 0.05, let's say, arc second. It's crazy small. It's one, let's see, that would be 60 times 60, one three thousand six hundredth of a degree. So if you took a degree and split it up into 3,600 pieces, we're having a fraction of that. That's the distance. That's this angle we're seeing. It's extremely small. I mean, I've drawn it big just to exaggerate it, but these, these are extremely small. But it's kind of cool how it works out. And we have an equation for it. And it goes like this. It goes D, and they even tell you it's in parsec equals 1 over P. And this right here is an arc second. So they really kind of remind you what the units are going to be for this thing right here. So it basically tells you, hey, the distance to some star in parsecs, at least, is going to be equal to 1 over the parallax angle in arc seconds. So we have an example of this. We have the star TRAPPIST-1, which is a red dwarf. By the way, this is a real star. It's a real uh, data here that I found for us. It's been confirmed to have at least seven planets orbiting it, which I think is awesome. So that means this little star here has you know, seven planets, at least, that are going around it, a little bit like us. And this star has a parallax angle. Notice how small this is. It's 0 0.08 arc seconds. Now the question is, how long would it take for a radio signal sent from Earth to reach one of the planets around TRAPPIST-1? Now you might think, wait a second, I don't know the distance from the planet to the star. But think about this, in the, ex in the extreme vast distances of space, the distance from us to the star is very big. The distance from the star to the planet is pretty much zero. So that's why we can assume they're the same distance to, from us as the star. And also, uh, you might think, oh, do I have to then calculate the distance, then can calculate the speeds or whatever? I mean, you could. But I think a simple way will be, hey, if we can find the distance to this star in light years, then we have our answer. Because if we want to send a radio signal, that's light. All right? A radio signal is actually just traveling light. So that means all we have to do then is if we found, for example, what if we calculated that the distance was, I don't know, 20 light years? Well, that means it would take light 20 years to get there. Boom, we're done. So let's use our equation. So the equation we've just been learning about, what's well, distance, and it's in parsec. Okay, and that thing equals 1 over p, which is a parallax angle, which is supposed to be an arc seconds. Do we have any converting to do? We actually don't. So we're going to have our distance, and it's just going to be 1 over the angle, which is 0 0.08. That's all we have to do. So we'll just open up a trusty calculator and calculate this. So I'll do a fraction, I'll say 1 over 0 0.08, and I end up with 12.5. Okay, so my answer is 12.5, but the question is 12.5 what? Well, this told me the answer in parsec. Okay, so I don't want my answer in parsec, though I want it in light years, but that's okay. I'm going to write it down just like this. I like to do these conversions in this way so I can sort of line them all up. I need to know some kind of conversion factor, and I do. I know that one parsec is 3.26 light years. So that means then, if I write it like this with the light years on top, parsec on the bottom, the parsecs will cancel out and my distance will be in light years. Hooray! So I'm just going to get out my good old calculator and just say, hey, this answer times 3.26. And I end up with 40.75. Okay, well, that's a distance of uh, basically 41 light years, let's just say. So we'll say, we'll approximate to 41 light years. Well, that means if it's 41 light years away, it literally means um, that's the time it'll take for light to get there. So we've actually answered our own question. The answer will be, hey, it'll take 41 years then to get this radio signal there. There we go.